Hey guys, what's up, what's up, what's up? This is Peter from Azusa Report. Um, there's been quite a bit, bit of questions and discussions about the situation revolving around my son, as well as my fam, ex, um, my ex-wife. And so, I've never openly talked about this, and I've always considered it a private matter. However, I feel I need to address it, and one of the reasons I need to address it is um, I'll be doing a message pretty soon where I'm calling a, a many broken men to reconcile and some of these people are have second marriages and that's adultery so I need to openly talk about the situation um, and and so that's what this video is uh, let, let, let me start with this my son is living in sin wickedness evil it is despicable what he is doing okay Let's just put it where it is. And I'm going to talk about that towards the end. Um, and I'm going to talk about why I've taken the position that I've taken. But before that, you have to understand, um, in June 2001, June 1st, 2001, I came home from a prayer meeting um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, the townhouse that I was living in, on Mingo there, was completely empty. I had been abandoned. Uh, I had been betrayed and abandoned. There's no way around it. There's there's nothing anybody can say that doesn't add up to she walked out on the marriage. And it's never acceptable to walk out on someone that God has called you to be. Before he called you to that situation, he knew all of the challenges in that situation, yet he called you into it. And so, when you walk out on a marriage, you're, you are walking out on the purposes of God. And there's no way around that. I don't, there's no, no amount, no amount of snazzy hermeneutics can change that. Okay? And so that's just, that's facts. So she had walked out. Now, what was going on? She was very, well, more her mother, which is a full-blown Jezebel. Uh, that's on like her third or fourth marriage now. That alone should tell you something. And then her father, which was uh, that they they her parents had divorced when she was way young, uh, is an Ahab. They both were consumed with money. Everything was about the dollar bill. It was greed. Okay. My view was simple. In the presence of God, there is no lack. So if there is lack, we need more of his presence. Not more worry, not more concern, not more stress. But we need his presence. And that that was kind of, I would say, 80% of the challenges that we were facing had to do with money. There were issues related to me. There were issues to... To walk out of your marriage of no, but there were issues, okay, uh, that that happened, okay, uh, and that was related to some of the the PTSD stuff. So there's that's the facts. Is I did not abandon my marriage. It she abandoned the marriage. She abandoned me, and. To take take someone that that was abandoned and blame them for what someone else did to them is demonic. Okay, that's that's blame shifting and it's of the devil. Let's get that crystal clear. So my son grew up, and when he well let me say this when he was born he did not have my last name. Okay, which was a huge issue. I found out that he was born from church gossip. And at that point, I told Melissa, if you want to be a single mother so damn bad, I can't stop you. But until he has my last name and until we're a family, I'm hands off. I'm not going to play the broken game, broken family game. Not happening. And I, I hold to that position because when I tell you I'm going to do something, I will follow through. And I followed through. 
I was completely hands off. And and I was going to be hands off until the the name issue was addressed until there was a until we were going to be a family. And neither one of those she was willing to do, so I had to keep my end of the bargain of I'm hands off. Okay, and so that's kind of what led up to this. And throughout his childhood, he was given lots. He was given a narrative. Jesus is truth, but everything else is a narrative. He was given a narrative about me that was blown way out of proportion. Um, and all kinds of stuff. He told, said that I didn't want him and all kinds of crazy stuff. When it was actually my ex that didn't want the family. It wasn't me. But yet I was blamed for not wanting him because that's how people that are influenced by Jezebel behave. Okay? So that leads up to where, where we are now. A few months ago, I reached out to him and I said, let's have some conversations. And um, his idea of a relationship was give me money. Okay? I gave him between $500 and $1,000. I don't I'd have to go look at how much I've actually given him. Uh, actually, it'd be well over a thousand because I've sent him a, other stuff. Okay, by the time you take goods and cash, it's well over a thousand dollars that I've given him in the last six months. Okay, so you you, but and he just wanted money. Uh, what had happened? He he was living in sin. He's still is living in sin, but he was out doing his sinful thing, being his prodigal son gig out in Boston, right outside of Boston. And he got stuck there because he missed his flight home because he was too busy living living his life of sin. And so he calls me and asks me if if I could send him some money. So I send him, I think, a hundred bucks. I don't remember what it is now. Um, and But I said, when you get in Kansas City... We're going to sit down. We're going to have a conversation. We're, I don't care if we do it at Starbucks. I don't care if we do it at Texas Roadhouse. I don't care if you come to my where I live. But we're going to have that conversa- a conversation. And he lands in Kansas City, heads straight to Topeka. Okay, that was when, that was the final straw. Because you cannot have a relationship with someone that doesn't even see enough value to sit down and have a conversation with you, but they see enough value to ask you for money. I'm not the food stamp office. And that's the harsh reality. Now, the spiritual side of things. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 says, to hand them over to the wicked one for the destruction of their flesh. Okay, that does not say, well, if it's your son, you're exempt from this. The word is the word is the word. He must be handed over for the destruction of his flesh. I care more about his soul than I do his feelings. And he's living in sin. And biblically, I am required to hand him over to the evil one for the destruction of his flesh. And now, what 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 is he actually doing? He is living a lifestyle of homosexuality. Okay, he believes, he's so deceived right now that he actually believes that God called, gave him a boyfriend. Okay, it's, he, he will ultimately burn in the lake of fire if he doesn't repent. He is not going to be able to stand before the great white throne of judgment and say, Peter's my dad. He's a revivalist. He preaches the gospel for souls. He reaches the down and out. Let me in. And the Lord will tell him, I know Peter, but I don't know you. Depart from me. I never knew you. That's the truth. That's where things are. And all of what I said that led up to that, it is what it is. You know, there's no turning back at this point. I, I'll, I'll quote the old hymn, though. 
the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Um, and so that's really the truth of what has happened, what is going on. I am grieved over the situation. I am coping with it. Um, but I'm not happy about it. Because this is a lifestyle he has chosen and he has embraced. Um, and it's all, who's to blame? Jezebel, Ahab. You know, there is consequences for living in sin and encouraging demonic behavior. Jezebel and Ahab will stand before the Lord for, for what they have done. There's no question in my mind. Um, and I, I firmly believe I've done everything I can to turn him from the wickedness that he's involved in. And went out of my way to try and develop some sort of relationship despite what was done in 2001. And he has chosen not to. It's not on my end at this point. And I, I know this is a little bit more blunt than most people are used to. I'm a little bit more straightforward in this video. But I wanted to get all the information out there. God bless you. There must be more.